Coming up in our news live at seven, more questions tonight about the future of Haiti. 24 hours after the prime minister promises to step aside, will CARICOM's plan for provisional leadership councils stand with gang leaders and a deeper look into how Haiti has descended into a near state of anarchy? The two don't necessarily go together. The central bank governor warns that a dip in inflation does not automatically mean prices will fall. He's talking exclusively with our news tonight. The family that has produced a governor general, a cabinet minister, and almost every other Bahamian background, a visit to the historic Hannah Estate in Auckland. And then in our news at 7.30, we continue our coverage on the growing crisis in Haiti. A local pastor speaks with our Megan Shepherd on the worsening situation there on the ground. Our news live at 7 starts right now. Welcome to our news live at 7. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Jerome Sawyer sitting in for Candino Knowles who's on assignment. Well, that growing crisis in Haiti remains at the top of CARICOM's agenda tonight. Uncertain about the future of the region's poorest country, a state of emergency remains in place 24 hours after the prime minister promised to step aside. But even now, that action hinges on a transition council and temporary leaders on the ground in Haiti. Armed gangs continue to wreak havoc, threatening civil war. Our local immigration consultant speaking with Megan Shepard and helping to put it into perspective for us. Immigration consultant Luby George is giving his take on the unrest and escalating violence in Haiti. George says that although the island nation has been known for its consistent state of emergencies and crises over the decades, he believes what is happening today is unprecedented. Following an emergency summit in Jamaica to restore law and order, there are plans to establish a presidential council. However, George contends that based on his knowledge, not many on the ground are in favor of preliminary proposals by CARICOM. And leading politicians, the most popular politicians, they do not agree with the CARICOM proposal as it stands. It's not that they're saying CARICOM doesn't have a right uh, to make a proposal. But it is what it is the articles within that proposal, the components that they're not necessarily agreeing with. And the source of the havoc on the island, according to George's, is also not on board with those articles. And then the gang leaders, they are also speaking about the Garacom proposal and they are not in agreement uh, um, with it. And if they're not in agreement with it, we all know that 80% of the metropolitan area, the capital of um, uh, Haiti, which is Port-au-Prince, they're running the show technically right now. But how would that then affect the Bahamian Defense Force officers that have committed to be deployed to Haiti? That Kenya is now saying, well, if the prime minister resigned, there is no sitting government, then how do you expect us to send our police force in there? And I think the same would affect uh, the Bahamas' position with the 150 defense force officers that we've pledged. If there's no sitting government, there's no prime minister. Yes, we've proposed a seven-person uh, presidential council. But the persons who are technically on the ground and, and wreaking havoc and running things are, are, are in control in Haiti right now, they're not in agreement with that. So how do we move forward? Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. Thanks a lot, Megan, and more questions coming out tonight. Well, gang violence running rampant in Haiti, over 4,000 prisoners released and the Haitian Prime Minister announcing his resignation. The ongoing crisis in Haiti may seem as though it crumbled quickly, but the country now on the brink of civil war has gone through a series of catastrophic natural disasters and political events that have led us to the situation the world is watching today. Here is Marlena Leonard. Haiti's troubles have lasted for centuries, but more recently a series of events has pushed the country closer to the brink of collapse. On January 12, 2010, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck with an epicenter only 16 miles west of the Haitian capital of Port-au-Prince, reportedly killing over 300,000 people and injuring another 300,000. But of course, it also destroyed much of the capital itself, leaving nearly 1.5 million people homeless in the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. The situation only worsened with the passing of Category 4 Hurricane Matthew in 2016. 
Jovenel Moise's journey as president of Haiti was turbulent from the beginning. His initial victory in 2015 was called into question and eventually annulled when the election was called fraudulent by some. When he was elected again in an election held over a year later, the trouble did not end there. Just two years later in 2018, hundreds of Haitians took to the streets of the capital, marching against government corruption, much of their anger targeted specifically at President Moïse. All of this came to a head when the president was assassinated and his wife badly wounded in the wee hours of July 7, 2021, after a large group of gunmen attacked his residence. That assassination only worsened the already muddied political waters of the country. Last month, Moïse's widow, ex-Prime Minister Claude Joseph, and Haiti's former chief of police, Leon Charles, were indicted in his murder. Just two weeks after Moïse's assassination, the Haitian government formally appointed Ariel Henry as prime minister. Violence took the spotlight again in April of last year, when locals in Port-au-Prince lynched 10 suspected gang members. And last September, the country's most powerful gang leader, Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier, urged Haitians to take to the streets and overthrow Prime Minister Ariel Henry's unelected government. The fear of governments being left unchecked may be residual from the Duvalier years, where Francois Duvalier and Jean-Claude Duvalier, also known as Papa Doc and Baby Doc, held on to power through sham elections and intimidation, including death squads, for almost 30 years. In a statement released this week, Cherizier says Haitians must be left to determine the way forward and further international intervention will plunge the country deeper into chaos. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. Well, great reporting there from our Marlena Leonard tonight, a good comprehensive piece. Well, we'll have more coverage on the crisis in Haiti, including comments from a local Haitian pastor that's coming up in our news at 730. Falling inflation does not mean falling prices. The sobering view coming from the central bank governor today as he spoke with our Berthony McDermott on the sidelines of a business outlook event. Central Bank Governor John Rowe says the decline in inflation won't directly result in a drop in prices. And here's why. The slowdown in inflation means that you get a break from further increases or increases at the same pace. It is not the same as saying prices decrease. Last month, the National Statistical Institute revealed overall inflation decreased by 0.5% when compared to November 2023. In 2023, the Inter-American Development Bank explained inflation in the Bahamas is expected to decrease to about 3% this year compared to 4.1% in March 2023. Roll explained the impact this could have on salaries. If we get a break from a continuous increase in prices, then we have an opportunity uh, through the workplace and, and salary growth and wages growth for wages to have an opportunity to catch up. So at least in terms of your purchasing power, you're, you're in a better position. So that is one of the advantages of seeing the, the pullback in terms of how rapidly prices might be going up. You give your salary and your income an opportunity to, to grow and catch up to the price increases that you may have already experienced. Despite this, Roll maintains inflation is expected to continue to decline. The general expectation is that for 2024, the average rate of inflation will be lower than in 2023. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Time for our first look at temperatures tonight. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is standing by in the Weather Center tonight with our, call it Hub Day Wednesday weather. Craig? Yeah, you could call it a hump day Wednesday weather <laughs> and it's comfortable out there. 72 degrees, it's cool uh, compared to what last evening. Mostly clear skies and we do expect those temperatures to continue to fall off. The winds are going to start falling off light but they are of the east and northeast at 8 miles per hour right now and it is making it feel like a comfortable cool 71. Temperatures around the islands right now at 75 in Freeport, 74 over in Marsh Harbor, Abaco. We pick up 76 this is in Town, Bimini, Nichols Town, Andros. Great Harbor Key, 75. Governor's Harbor, you guys, is 74. Central Bahamas, 77. Kemp's Bay, Coburn Towns in Salvador and in Deadman's Key, 76 in Georgetown. Arthur's Town, Cat Island, you guys, 74. And into the Southeast Bahamas, 78. Duncan Town, Ragged Island, Colonel Hill Cricket Island, Abraham's Bay. Our favorite spot, Delectable Bay, you guys are 77. Providentialis, 79, and Matthew Town, Inago, you rounded our temperature profile at 81. Quiet conditions across the area, once again, as high pressure remains in charge, that's keeping us rather dry, and uh, the winds are starting to fall off as that high slides out towards the uh, east. There is a disturbance in the uh, eastern gulf, western gulf, or 
Mexico, actually Gulf of Mexico, just west of Florida. That's going to ride towards the north. High pressure will keep that well at bay, but we will continue to enjoy some very nice conditions for the next couple of weeks, couple of days before time, things start to warm up for the weekend. That's your first look of weather. Stick with us so that we can extend it for a gas and and still to come on our news tonight, charges for a cruise ship passenger after police say they found cocaine in his cabin. This after a woman did not make it on her way here from Florida. And they are responsible for sentencing offenders every day. But a group of female judges are doing something to try and stop a group of young women from reappearing in their courts. And coming up at 7.30... A former NIB minister, Shane Gibson, says the scheduled increase in NIB is a tax, not a contribution. That's coming up when our news returns. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer service that we pride ourselves on. Immerse yourself in the enchanting allure of Acklands. Night after night, accompany us on a week-long expedition as we unveil the undiscovered treasures of this island paradise. See its pristine beaches, embrace the vibrant culture, and live the experience through the lens of our news. Tune in every night at 7 p.m. for a captivating blend of inspiration, adventure, and the irresistible charm of Acklands. Coming this March, only on our news. A 32-year-old American tourist fined after cocaine was found in his cruise ship cabin. The Florida passenger was on the Margaritaville cruise ship and pleaded guilty to possession of dangerous drugs. At his arraignment before Senior Magistrate Lequay Lang today, he was fined $1,500 and given a six-month prison sentence for non-payment. Grand Bahama police were investigating the sudden death of the man's 27-year-old American girlfriend, on Monday when they found the cocaine in his luggage. She died in their stateroom as the ship made its way to Grand Bahama. The cause of the girlfriend's death remains unknown. Well, they are normally handing out sentences to the accused, but recently a group of female justices and magistrates traded in their judicial robes for a softer, more human touch. They paid a visit to the Willie Mae Pratt Juvenile Center for Girls. While it was a part of International Women's Day activities, the impact went far beyond just a day of activities. Senior Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson. It is important because it's an opportunity to give something back in terms of our time and our talents, but most importantly for let, to let them know that we believe in them, we believe in second chances, and it is not about punitive measures, but more about rehabilitation, and that is where our focus is. The visiting justices included Denise Lewis-Johnson, Camille Darwell gomez Joy Ann Ferguson Pratt and Magistrate Jan Marie Darvel Miller. The visit, an attempt to move away from the stereotypical roles as harsh officers of the court to real people of compassion, even more evident in the fact 
that they came with gifts. We are always advised professionally by social services and we receive reports um, from individuals, uh, fellow professionals who are trained in the area. And so we're always advised as to the personal circumstances of the persons that we may have to sentence. But today, what we really want to let them know is that the journey does not begin and end today. Um, that any time they fall, they can rise again, and anything they wish to achieve, they will. When our news comes back from the break, we're turning our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world. Uncertainty about that pledge of thousands of Kenyan troops to Haiti after the Prime Minister of Haiti agrees to step aside. Plus, women in the region still in an uphill battle for equality, so says CARICOM's Secretary General and the search for Colombian tourists missing in the British Virgin Islands. We'll have the details when our news returns. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Immerse yourself in the enchanting allure of Acklands. Night after night, accompany us on a week-long expedition as we unveil the undiscovered treasures of this island paradise. See its pristine beaches, embrace the vibrant culture, and live the experience through the lens of our news. Tune in every night at 7 p.m. for a captivating blend of inspiration, adventure, and the irresistible charm of Acklands. Coming this March, only on our news. Transformation for better business results. This is our news. Welcome back. We turn our attention now to stories making headlines across the world. Uncertainty hangs over Haiti's political future tonight after Prime Minister Ariel Henry said he would step down. Questions remain about restoring safety and security there after the deployment of Kenyan police officers has been put on hold. Those officers were to help quell gang-fueled lawlessness. Emma Jali reports. Only 11 days ago, Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry and Kenyan President William Ruto signed an agreement that Ruto said would fast-track the deployment of the officers to the Caribbean nation. The jarring turn of events leaves the future of the UN-backed multinational mission for Haiti in serious doubt. Kenya's government first pledged 1,000 officers to lead the security mission last July, but the initiative had been tied up in court challenges ever since. On March 1st, Henri signed an agreement with Kenya's government. The agreement was intended to address concerns raised by a Kenyan judge who had deemed an existing plan unlawful. 
but Henri was then unable to return to Haiti because of escalating violence. Haiti besoin de la paix. He has now announced that he would be resigning as soon as a transitional council and temporary leader are chosen. But it was not clear when that might happen with a tenuous security situation in the capital, Port-au-Prince. U.S. officials said on Tuesday that members of the transition council should be appointed within 48 hours. Following talks this week in Jamaica between Caribbean leaders and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. According to the United Nations, some 360,000 people are internally displaced and 1,200 have been killed since the start of the year. The Kenyan deployment faced major obstacles well before Henri resigned. Kenya had also asked to be paid the cost of the deployment up front. That's contrary to U.N. rules that require the funds it administers to be used only to reimburse costs already incurred, according to a diplomat in Nairobi and U.N. officials. They said that Kenya would therefore need to find a country willing to pay it directly. Well, CARICOM Secretary General Dr. Carla Barnett says women in the region still have many challenges to overcome, including pay equality, gender-based violence, and social exclusion. In a message marking International Women's Day, the region's top female public servant said the Caribbean countries this year should celebrate the progress we have made towards gender equality and women's empowerment. She said the region, as the region goes forward, investing in strengthening regional and national gender equality is critical to investing in women and for accelerating progress. And finally, a search is underway on the British Virgin Islands for three missing Colombian tourists. According to media reports, the trio was last seen on Sunday. The British Virgin Islands Immigration Department reported that they arrived on the UK overseas territory on the Norwegian Sky cruise ship and did not return. The incident comes weeks after a Brazilian couple went missing after visiting the territory but were later found safe in early January. And still to come on our news today in history, find out interesting facts about the day that was. And later, how the Hannas got here. A visit to the Hanna estate in Auckland. Our Kindino Notes and team take us on an amazing journey of discovery. Then in our news at 7.30, seven ships with 20,000 passengers in one day. Sailing into Nassau, an historic day at the new cruise port. All that and more ahead on our news. If new. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us um, and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Immerse yourself. And we're back here on our news. It's time to turn our spotlight on events that shaped the day that was March 13th.
On this day in Bahamian history, Maya Rassen was born in 1909. Rassen was a doctor who immigrated to the Bahama Islands sometime in 1942. The Bahamas Historical Society notes that he worked as a doctor and later founded Rassen Hospital on New Providence, known today as Doctors Hospital. He founded the hospital along with his wife in 1955. Dr. Rassen died in Nassau in 1989. In 1922, Edwin Paul Aubrey was born on Harbor Island in Uthra. Aubrey was an author, historian, and the third president of the Bahamas Historical Society. Among his works are The Story of the Bahamas, The Paradise Island Story, and The Harbor Island Story. On March 13, 1930, Eileen DePeach Caron was born in Nassau. Her father was the founder and editor of the Tribune newspaper. The Bahamas Historical Society notes that she became assistant editor at the Tribune in 1962, and 10 years later, in 1972, she took over as publisher of the daily newspaper. In 1993, she became the owner of the first privately owned radio station in the Bahamas, 100 Jams. Well, it's been nothing but a week of fun and adventures for our team in Acklands. But tonight, our news anchor, Candino Knowles, goes on a journey of discovery, reliving a bit of history preserved in the ruins on a plantation in Portland, Acklands. He tells us it was once a busy estate consisting of not only a vast cotton field, but a wide farmstead. Welcome, you guys, to Portland. This is the Portland estate. It was a former slave plantation. It's a multi-generation property that Patricia Clare Nee Hanna and her husband Louis now proudly call home. Situated in the widest expanse of Acklands, it's the very thing Pat tells us drew John Hanna, the only Hanna she says is known to set foot in the Bahamas, to claim this land. She tells us how John initially settled in Cricket Island post-American Revolution, perpetuating the dark legacy of slavery. It was Acklands, she says, enticed him with promises of superior cotton. He came with his slaves, some 40 plus slaves, and he came and they were commuting from Crooked Island to Acklands. And most remained in Portland, direct ancestors to the Hanna clan we know today. Their legacy intertwined with the history of this land, a history we could not wait to uncover on our week-long journey across Acklands. Off we go. See the walls are going down. There's a lot of walls. Then it was oh, up a hill. I'm scared. Wait till you see it when we're coming down. <laughs> right. Moments later, our first stop on the plantation. This is the main house that they were building when slavery was abolished. Most people expect it to be two-story. It was going to be two-story. You come inside. Just be careful walking. These rocks and boulders had to be... Hand. Hand lift. Uh-huh, hand lift. And if you'd notice that these were actually cut. Their labor, a testament to their skill that even beckoned me to try my hand. There you go, there you go. I think that's All the right. most I could do. Yeah. <laughs> the plantation also holds the remnants of a downed World War II aircraft, which we weren't able to capture, but Pat and Louis tell the story. According to the story that was told, you could see that it was in distress and somewhere beyond the ridge, they were told, they said that the craft after came down. Yet with more to uncover, another reason to return. And as our journey nears its end, I couldn't help but leave this humble token of gratitude with our ancestors, a gesture that pales in comparison to the debt of thanks we owe. When we get a gentleman to repair these things, you need to come back and put it back. From the hollowed grounds of Hannah Homestead in Portland, Acklands, reporting for our news, I'm Kendino Knowles. And another riveting story coming out of Acklands. Of course, to watch that story again and for all of today's top stories, visit rnews.bs. That does it for me, my time, and our news at 7. Joining us now is Megan Shepard with the latest headlines for 7.30. Megan.
Thanks so much, Jerome. Quick thing, I'm just a little bit jealous that you and Natalia are planning a trip to Ackland, so I'm just going to throw you that out there. You for one more, you can join. Perfect, there we go. <laughs> Good to go. Coming up tonight in 7 to 30, our coverage on Haiti continues. A Haitian pastor from Grand Bahama is calling on the Bahamas and other CARICOM nations to intervene. And hear why a former minister responsible for national insurance says government is moving in the right direction by increasing the NIB contribution rate. Here are your latest headlines. Coming up tonight, a nation in crisis. Unprecedented circumstances in Haiti leaving Haitians and the world wondering if or when peace will come. A local Grand Bahama pastor weighs in. Plus, he was once the minister responsible. Now, former NIV minister Shane Gibson says the 1.5 rate hike is long overdue. Find out what else he's saying. And later, land ahoy 20,000 passengers on seven ships at the new port in a single day. And later, our news to the islands continues to explore scenic Acklands. Tonight, our Candino Knowles takes on a culinary tour inside Club Roll X. These stories and more when our news at 7.30 comes right back. Bahamas Power and Light Company Limited looks forward to helping our customers eliminate wasted energy. Energy conservation is the decision and practice of using less energy. Energy efficiency means using less energy to perform the same task. Unplugging appliances not in use, that's energy conservation. Replacing an old refrigerator, washing machine with a new model, adding insulation to the attic and walls of a home, that's energy efficiency. People can serve to gain more control over their energy bill and to reduce demand on the Earth's natural resources. Take this journey with us as we build for better. BPL. You've heard of electric cars. Now it's time you drive one. Easy Car Sales welcomes you to experience the power and prestige of the latest electric vehicles. Plug in at home for a 65% discount off your gas bill and never get stuck at the pump again. Build your dreams of a better future with a better car. The BYD EV. Visit easy242.com to book your free test drive today. Save your money while driving in style. Only at Easy Car Sales. Are you ready to make a difference? Well, Inti Corporation invites all students to join the second Inti Environmental Essay Competition under the theme, Women as Climate Innovators. Dive into the world where women lead the charge in battling climate change, pioneering green technologies, and shaping sustainable futures. If you're a high school junior, senior, or college level student, this can be your platform. Winners of the competition will receive up to $1,000 and a chance to speak at the Inti Corporation. Welcome to our news and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Megan Shepard. The crisis in Haiti is escalating. Many schools and banks are closed and the country's health care system is on the brink of collapse. Hundreds of people have been slaughtered and homes and businesses are being burnt to the ground, leaving many to wonder where to go. Tonight, our Italia Hall speaks with a Grand Bahama pastor originally from Haiti. He says the situation there is beyond concerning all the guys who are listening right now if you love Haiti please stop the violence Grand Bahama pastor Abner Mu says conditions in Haiti are deteriorating each day and for the first time in Haiti's history the schools and banks are closed airlines have also halted flights which he says is not the norm he describes what the conversation is like when he speaks with his family members at home right now Talia they in a position they cannot go out they don't sleep well. They, 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 the, the same way they, look, they see the day, that's the same way they see the night also. No peace at all. My family, my uncle, and, and, and my cousin, I spoke. See, no one wants to stay in Haiti right now. Everybody wants to leave the, the country to go someplace else. And seeing the chaos for Pastor Muse is depressing. When you look at the new generation, young people dying, Old people die, so everybody just don't have no uh, 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 a secure or safe place. You cannot be a citizen in your country and you are not safe. As for whether he thinks the recent resignation of former Prime Minister Ariel Henry will make a difference for that Caribbean nation. I think this is a start because he's the one who was in the positions uh, when doing nothing after the death of the Jovenel Moise. So right now the people is tired of that system. 
They said they need him to change. But he says the problem now is the people of Haiti feels as if they don't have a voice. Because the big people who are in positions, they stand and they tell Haiti what to say or what to choose. They want to choose for Haiti, but they, they don't want Haiti to make no decision. He's calling on the people of Haiti to live in peace as he says violence will not solve the issues. It is his hope that the Bahamas and other CARICOM nations send officers to Haiti as he says the help is needed. But we need honest help. Someone who are honest to say, okay, you all need help. Sit down, let me help you all. Let me tell you all what to do. Reporting for our news, I'm Italia Hall. Great insight. Thanks so much, Italia. Well, tonight, a former national insurance minister is weighing in on the government's decision to increase the NIV contribution by 1.5% in July. But what does he really think about the announcement coming from current NIV and immigration minister Alfred Sears during his mid-year budget contribution? Well, our Joshua Williams fills us in. I thought it should have been done a long time ago. It's former National Insurance Minister Shane Gibson saying he thinks the government is making the right move in increasing the NIB contribution rate by 1.5 percent. Gibson served as Minister of Labor and National Insurance and the Public Service under the 2012 Christie administration. He describes the move as a tax, not a contribution. If you look at the very first actual review, it would tell you at the time that the contribution rate at that time should have been higher. But because um, the government of the day didn't want to put too much of a burden on the um, citizens, they decided to keep it lower than it should have been. And so every actual review since then keeps speaking about either increasing the contribution rate or eventually the plan running out of money. But how did we get here? The former parliamentarian says it's a result of successive governments kicking the can down the road. Yeah, at the time, they recommended we increase the contribution rate. And that was long before I was minister. But every time we do a review, we hope that we get a different result, but we keep getting the same results. Gibson has been vocal about an increase in contribution for some time. However, many in the political arena, including the opposition, slamming the increase, accusing the Davis administration of being confused over NIB. Gibson not holding back on that notion. Tell them to tell the Bahamian public that if they win the next government, they'll reduce it and put it back to what it is now, if they really feel that way. Because you can't play politics with this. This is one of those topics where you cannot play politics. Now, while Gibson understands the burden this increase may put on the pockets of Bahamians, he says it's something that has to be done now. It is a very painful exercise, but I can tell you, um, at the end of the day, if you don't do it, we're going to be in trouble. So I, I um, understand, I sympathize, and I empathize with them. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. Thanks, Josh. Renovations of the sewer system at Awaki hitting a snag, but officials insist they're still on target. Earlier this year, the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources signed a contract with the Water and Sewerage Corporation to upgrade the area's sewer system and main water supplies. Giving an update on how the project is going so far, Site Operations Manager at Awaki, Levon Miller. The team at WSE has been actively engaged in the upgrade. Um, of course, like we informed the public earlier, we ran into a small uh, unforeseen challenge with the tide, um, and we have communicated that to them, that uh, we intend to carry out our plan in the, in the off chance or in the instances where, where God dictates something differently then we will have to make the adjustment as necessary. But as far as our plan is, it is, it is still on target. The $100,000 project was slated to be completed within six to eight weeks. He's positive that timeline will remain. Now, despite the ongoing renovations at our key, Miller is hopeful business at the key will remain steady. Well, I will tell you this, there are seven cruise ships tied up. Um, you know, the, 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 the estimation uh, I saw in the newspapers 20,000 people. As you can imagine, that is about the equivalence of any small island population. So I have small island populations showing up here at Arawaki. And uh, as that demand swells, I trust that that will spill over into the vendors. Well, so far we've shown you how to get to Acklands, where to stay, and even a quick lesson on fly fishing. But tonight, our Candino Knowles has a treat for your taste buds. But first, meteorologist Greg Thompson joins us from the Weather Center with your first look at temperatures. Greg, what can we expect tonight? I want to know what that treat is. Candino's Me too. Gonna... <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's pretty nice, though, on the outside. Temperatures are rather comfortable, 72, mostly clear skies. East-northeast winds at 7 miles per hour. 
and your feel slight temperature is at 71. Current conditions around the islands, high pressure ridge in charge, dry conditions across the area, light winds. We still have some swells affecting the uh, Atlantic exposures, but there's a disturbance just across the uh, Gulf of Mexico, just west of Florida. That's going to actually ride towards the north, should clip the northern Bahamas. So you could see one or two isolated showers, but that high pressure will remain in charge for the remainder of the week, and then we expect a warm up by the weekend. That's a quick check on conditions around the islands. Stick with us, so look at your extended forecast is still to come. When our news comes back from the break, our Candino Knowles heads to Club Rolex for a down-home culinary exploration fit for the foodies. Plus, concerned about the rise of artificial intelligence? It's an area of discussion at the annual RF Economic Outlook. Stand by for a few things you should know. Plus, bursting at the seams, seven cruise ships bring 20,000 passengers to the NASA cruise port in a single day when our news returns. Are you ready to make a difference? Well, Inti Corporation invites all students to join the second Inti Environmental Essay Competition under the theme, Women as Climate Innovators. Dive into the world where women lead the charge in battling climate change, pioneering green technologies, and shaping sustainable futures. If you're a high school junior, senior, or college level student, this can be your platform. Winners of the competition will receive up to $1,000 and a chance to speak at the Inti Corporation's Youth Forum on the Environment. The overall winner becomes Inti's Youth Ambassador for the Environment. So don't miss this chance to be heard. Submit your essay by April 15 and join us in celebrating and elevating women as climate innovators. For more information, visit inti.global or email us at essay at inti.global. Inti's Environmental Essay Competition, powered by Inti. Powering your world, powering your future. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. of our trip to Acklands, our viewers waiting on things to do and places to visit. We got a resounding consensus on a place called Club Rolex. It was one of the first stops for our news anchor Candino Knowles, who in this Our News to the Island series shares what makes Club Rolex a top-notch culinary experience. Stay for the taste. Fries are good. And that was just one of many delightful meals we savored at the renowned Club Rolex in Snow Corner, Acklands. Club Rolex is the number one spot on this island, and we're known for good food. 32 years ago, Henry Roll made the pivotal decision to return home from Nassau, despite prevailing misconceptions about life on the island. Encouraged by his mother, Henry says he's never looked back, relishing the opportunity to showcase his culinary prowess in his hometown. When you talk about the hospitality business, you need people who can cater to people. And local residents travel great distances for the tantalizing flavors Henry serves up. And after you've had this fresh Auckland scooper, what better way than to wash this all down with a good old cold collect. Now well, that's good. Auckland's grouper, Bear the Bahamas, best thing ever. You can go anywhere on the island and you can buy a collect beer or whatever beer and all tastes the same. But when it comes to food, trust me man, a man will drive miles for good food 
in order to buy a beer. Over the years, Henry has diligently honed his skills in the kitchen, refining his menu to perfection. He proudly proclaims that cooking is a rite of passage for all Ackland's men, a tradition he says is deeply ingrained in the island's culture. And he says he's grateful for the influence of his ancestors who fuel his passion. And I'm sitting on land where my ancestors, they uh, develop and kept for me. And, and, and that encouraged me because I know I need to develop and encourage for my kids soon. And to his loyal supporters, especially those who guided us to the best spots upon our arrival in Acklands. I always want to say to them, thanks, and you always to win beneath my wings and always encouraging me to continue to push and to be here. And think into that grouper. Now that's fresh. Now that's fresh. Really good. Thank you. From Stout Corner, Acklands, reporting for our news, I'm Candino Knowles. Candino, you are clearly having too much fun, but you are not allowed to return without some Acklands grouper. Well, the RF Economic Outlook, bringing the business community together, both local and international, to discuss key issues, preparing them for the way forward. RF Holdings Limited President and CEO Michael Anderson says this year's one-day conference will be focused on artificial intelligence and how it affects geopolitical and economic trends. It's largely a, um, an informative event around key issues that people can then use and take advantage of as they move forward, you know, whether it's for businesses, whether it's for people themselves. Um, and we believe it's important, particularly today, we're talking about artificial intelligence and this idea of how do we take advantage of it. Anderson says they expect more than 300 attendees, the largest attendance since the start of the Outlooks. The pandemic year saw a hybrid form of the Outlook, and Anderson says the full face to face event has been, well, nice. We're excited to get people out. I think it's like you, you put on these shows and you really hope people learn. So if they don't get here and they don't see it, then it's like to some extent a wasted opportunity. So it's nice when people um, take advantage of what we're putting out there. Still to come on our news, record-breaking numbers for the crew sports once again. Plus... Coming up in sports, the Bahamas Basketball Federation names its new slate of national team head coaches. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer services that we pride ourselves on. Immerse yourself in the enchanting allure of Acklands. Night after night, accompany us on a week-long expedition as we unveil the undiscovered treasures of this island paradise. See its pristine beaches, embrace the vibrant culture, and live the experience through the lens of our news. Tune in every night at 7 p.m. for a captivating blend of inspiration, adventure, and the irresistible charm of Acklands. Coming this March, only on our news.
You're watching our news. Welcome back. The Bahamas Basketball Federation names new national team coaches and primary school golfers begin national play at nationals. Here now with our sports presented by 10th year seniors is Ronaldo Dorset. Ronaldo. Thanks, Megan, and welcome to our sports presented by 10th year seniors. I'm Ronaldo Dorset. Let's do show. The Bahamas Basketball Federation announced a list of coaches charged with leading its national team programs for the next three years. Headlining the list of new appointees is perhaps the most accomplished coach in Bahamian basketball history, Yolette McPhee McEwen. Coach Yo's first tenure as senior women's national team head coach was highlighted in 2015 when she led the team to a gold medal at the CBC Championships. Now that we have this thing running smoothly, I am really looking forward to sinking my teeth back into both junior and senior program. In 2023, she also served as an assistant on the staff for the senior men's national team. The junior women will be led by Anton Francis, who gave his thoughts on the way forward for the program. Part of my process will be to, of course, with the assistance of the coaching committee and the basketball federation is to select assistants and team managers that are um, dynamic. The junior men coaches lead a pair of powerhouse high school basketball programs in Grand Bahama. Sunland Baptist head coach Jay Philippe will make his national team coaching debut in leading the under-17 men program. The under-15 men will be led by Tabernacle Baptist head coach Kevin Clark. Clark previously served as assistant coaches on the under-15 and under-17 central basket teams. The Capital Union Bank National Golf Championships moved into day two with the private primary school division. The top three teams and top 10 individuals in each division will join the public primary school qualifiers in tomorrow's final. In the lower primary boys division, St. Andrew's team of William Stevenson, Advik Okora and Zane Gibson took first place, followed by Windsor and Queens College. Stevenson was the top individual qualifier. In the lower primary girls, Poitier Golf Home Schools team, which includes top individual qualifier Zion Poitier, Skyra Chambers, and Zayden Poitier finished first. Queens College and Summit Academy also qualified for the final. In the upper primary boys, Windsor School's Hugo Johnston, Zachary Landry, and Hawthorne Wood finished first, St. Andrews finished second, and the home school team was third. Maximilian DeMole of King's College was the division's top qualifier. Windsor School's upper primary girls team of Zara Graves, Adriel Gonclaves, Amelia Ingacciato, and Taylor Davis finished first. Home School and Queens College also advanced to the final. Graves was your top qualifier in the division. The off-season work is already paying dividends for several Bahamian minor leaguers. Before they left for their 2024 assignments with their respective franchises, Sharif Nemour and Chad Delancey discussed their off-season regimen and plans for improvement headed into this year. The 18-year-old Nemour is a Miami Marlins shortstop prospect who hit 315 with 19 RBI. It was a long off-season, longer than usual, but I've been putting in the work every day, coming to the field going to the gym, stuff like that. The 17-year-old Delancey returns to the DSL for his second season and hopes to progress in the organization quickly. The thing that helped me to gain success was getting stronger because you play in a pro season and you play in so much games and stuff, that's gonna have a lot of wear on your body. That'll do it for our sports presented by 10th Year Seniors. I'm Ronaldo Dorset. back to the studio. Still ahead tonight, Greg is back with your extended weather forecast. Plus, the Nassau cruise port has reason to celebrate, 20,000 to be exact. We've got more to come on their historic cruise ship day. Stick with us. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. In what we do at Best Brew, it really doesn't end when the customer purchases our product. We offer specialty coffee, tea, spices, and brewing equipment. We do a lot of, um, of our orders via website. We actually have the mobile service and the phone service and the internet. So having business in a box really kind of brought everything together for us and helps us to be able to provide the customer service that we pride ourselves on. 
Immerse yourself in the enchanting allure of Acklands. Night after night, accompany us on a week-long expedition as we unveil the undiscovered treasures of this island paradise. See its pristine beaches, embrace the vibrant culture, and live the experience through the lens of our news. Tune in every night at 7 p.m. for a captivating blend of inspiration, adventure, and the irresistible charm of Acklands. Coming this March, only on our news. Embrace technology and the digital transformation. <laughs> Welcome back and thanks for sticking with us. Beautiful weather on the outside of the Our New Studios this evening. As to what you can expect weather-wise for the remainder of the week, Greg is back with your extended forecast. Yeah, thanks again, Megan. Welcome back, everybody, for our final look. Quiet weather for the next several days as the high-pressure system remains in charge. That's going to keep us rather dry and uh, winds are expected to fall off. There's a disturbance in the Eastern Gulf of Mexico that's going to ride across North Central Florida. That high pressure system will keep that system at bay, but you can see a couple of isolated showers across the extreme northern islands. But warmer temperatures are expected for the weekend as the system continues to push away from us, the high pressure system. Quiet through the night and into tomorrow, moisture associated with that system waning as it pushes to the uh, east. And then we have some high level moisture moving in the form of some clouds that will continue through uh, the end of the week. Boating forecast should be nice on the waters for the northwest and central bombers. Your winds will be out of the east to southeast, 10 to 15 knots. They will fall light and variable at times. Seas running two to four feet over the ocean, but we still have some northeasterly as well, so exercise some caution out there. High tide is at 11.26 tonight. Your low tide taking place at 5.51 in the morning for the southeast Bahamas. A caution flag in place for you guys. Winds a little stronger northeast to east, 15 knots. Seas three to five feet, but building up to seven feet in some northeasterly swells. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In the extended forecast, quiet conditions through the remainder of the week. There is a frontal boundary expected by early next week. We could see some isolated showers with that Monday, Tuesday, but temperatures will take a slight dip by Tuesday into Wednesday. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe night, everybody. Thanks so much, Greg. And historic day for the Nassau cruise port, as for the first time ever, the port welcomed seven ships yesterday. The ships collectively carrying about 20,000 vacationers, a milestone for the port that opened last May. The historic day comes on the heels of a record-breaking 2023 for the port, which welcomed over 4 million passengers aboard 1,210 vessels. That figure represented a 14% increase over the previous record rather, set in 2019. Being one of the busiest cruise ports in the region, Assistant Operations Manager Eli Thompson says it reaffirms that the Bahamas remains open for business. Passengers are very amazed. A lot of passengers are first-time passengers. I think Nassau Cruise Port and what we're doing here is a good example that the Bahamas is still one of the best tourist destinations in the world. We have a brand new facility with a lot of vendors, a lot of things for them to do, purchase and explore. A huge part of this success is marketing Bahamian culture, something NCP marketing and communications manager Sean Gomez says is at the forefront when guests arrive. Now when people come off the cruise ships, there are more for them to do. So we help them going into the port marketplace and the port plaza where you could find authentic Bahamian goods, handmade Bahamian um, goods, where you have actual Bahamian products, whether it be um, honey, whether it be pepper, whether it be um, wines, um, we have it all. So we're very proud of what we have to display here at NASA Cruise Port. 
Awesome news for the crew sport. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a safe and wonderful evening.